Hello, okay, this video is about just generally like what is the yaw and sway? What do we do? So, um, like a big thing is, is uh, the holidays, you know, so like we don't, um, we don't celebrate the same holidays as everyone else. We don't do Christmas and Easter and things like that, some of them, but we do like, like we do Ethiopian Christmas, which is January 7th, because January 20th, I mean, because December 25th is Nimrod's birthday, who is who's uh, the king of the original king of Babylon. So, and you know the Babylon religion of Book of Revelations. So it's um, you know it's not really it's not our thing. We're not we're not trying we're purposely trying not to be one with Babylon. So again, the main one of the main prophets you know is uh. You know the the main deities is is uh, Jesus, who we call uh, um, Yahoshua. Yahoshua means Yah, which means Jah. Hoshua means Savior, Deliverer. The um, the name Jesus Christ is ba what Babylon calls him, which is a mixture of Zeus, which is the the Greek Most High God, and then Christos, which is another Greek deity. So in the Bible, it never says the word Jesus or or Christ, those are just white man's little things they added to it to be creative, you know, um, and all that. You know, that's the subject of uh, the mixing of the the Catholics, how they mix in pagan things and all that. That's another discussion for another day. But we just don't get involved. If, if So basically, we're witches, and in witchcraft, you can pick a deity but but if you pick a deity, you can have all the baggage that comes with that. So we, we pick we pick Jah, the deity of the Bible, Yahweh, more appropriately. Jah is short for Yahweh. But the thing is, is that we're not interested in what the Catholic Church has invented and things like that. We're just interested if we're going to worship that deity that's connected to the book that's the Bible. We're just interested in what the Bible says. We don't care what... The politicians and and all the little things that have happened and blah 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 that's just that's that's not for us you know so we do the witches holidays we do, do a you know like candle mass and spring equinox Beltane Samhain that's Halloween summer solstice Lamas Mabun you know, we do all those things. We don't do Christmas, but we do the Passover. We do Ethiopian Christmas, where we celebrate Ethiopia and the church in Sardis, which is uh, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, who has the Ark of the Covenant today and the Holy Priesthood of Aaron. And, um, and then on January 23rd, we celebrate the king's birthday. And on November 2nd, we celebrate the king's coronation. You know, of Eilis Lossi's the king. So Jesus, Eilis Lossi, and Mother Mary, who uh, represents Mother Nature and Jah's mother. Um, so we use uh, Mother Mary as the symbol for Mother Nature and for, for uh, that. And then on the Passover, we just, you know, we drink some um, some kosher wine in remembrance of the blood and eat some unleavened bread in remembrance of the body. And we we walk through in the New Testament what happened during the the Passover supper, the night, you know, the sundown, uh, just before they took him into custody at, at nighttime uh, towards the crucifixion and his illegal trial. It was illegal. You're not supposed to put people on trial on the Passover. So then, 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 um, then we after that, after we reenact, no, not reenact. After we go through all that and do the feet washing and just like kind of review all of what happened and, and take the sacrament and smoke some herb if we have some, if that's we're doing that at that time in our life. Then um, we watch the movie The Passion and think about the, you know, and remember the body and the blood that was shed for us and what it means. Um, so we have, there's 13 sacred holidays of the Yon Sway, and, and no, that's a big part of it, you know. So another big part of it, another big part of it are the books. There's 10, there's 10 mandatory books, and three of those are sacred. It's the Dragonfly Sutra, the Schofield Study King James Version Bible, 
and The Witch's Magical Handbook by Gavin and Yvonne Frost, some of the found, founders of, uh, of Wicca. So we, we study those books, and, and um, then there's, there's seven more books, so ten in total, that are, that are, uh, that are also mandatory books. But the thing is, the, the, the three sacred books are books that we, we're, we're always going to be looking at and references, referencing for the rest of our life. Okay, but but um, the uh, the other seven books that are mandatory, they all work together really. Like one really important book, is the mandatory books, perhaps the most important ones, the Complete Guide to the Kabbalah by Will Parfit, which uh, teaches you about the the tarot deck and the Kabbalah. So the the Kabbalah and then the tarot deck. The tarot deck is even more an active part of the Yan Sway than the actual Bible, or even just the three sacred books. The, it's all about the tarot deck, you know? Um, so, uh, so we have the ten mandatory books, when three of which are the sacred books. And then we have thirteen more books, which are books to be sure to read, you know, including the autobiographies of Eileen Slossy, a um, book on how to astral travel, a book on... At, Amulets and talismans, the book on the histories of fire magic, water magic, air magic, earth magic, and transcendental magic by Eliphaz Levy, the book of Thoth by Master Therian, uh, following Mary to Jesus by Andrew Apostoli, and you know, like the there's some required books. So, um, so there's the ten mandatory books, then the thirteen other books to be sure to read. So. Basically, the 10 mandatory books we need to read and write those on the tables of our heart because no book is the, is the Word of God, you know? Scriptures are not the Word of God, is the new teaching that, that we learn at, um, with the Yah and Sway faith. But they can be rewritten on the tables of your heart. So you read the Dragonfly Sutra and you rewrite it on the tables of your heart as an individual. You read the King James Version Schofield Study Bible and write it on the tables of your heart. And you can re-reference them and everything, you know? You don't have to throw them away after you're done. And then the Witch's Magical Handbook needs to be written on the tables of your heart. And really, all 10 mandatory books need to be written on the table of your heart. And you can reference those, but the three sacred books need to be kind of like the pinnacle within your own system. So the tables of your heart are really the, and you know, your relationship with your holy guardian angel. We all have two guardian angels. We have the nighttime guardian angel and the daytime guardian angel. And that's very sacred and personal. And even with your closest spouse or your closest people, you don't reveal any information about your uh, your conversations with the holy guardian angel. And, and, um, and so, uh, so, so the, you have the holidays, then you have the sacred books and that's, a uh, that's really important. That's pr pretty much the bulk of what, what the Answay is about. There's a, the, the, a big thing that happens in the dragonfly sutra that's really important is the first chapter redefines who God is because Babylon redefined God as this man in the sky and said the priest and the book speak for him, which is just one, pretty much like uh, George Carlin says, is one of the biggest cons in history, the biggest bullshit story cons of the of history. You know, duh, how can you believe we fell for that? Like, and when, come on, come all, you will no longer think for yourself, I will think for you because I speak for God. And, and you know, and if you don't believe me, we'll kill you, you know, and God loves you, we'll kill you. You know, it's like, okay, yes, mm, we can't think for ourselves, but, but the, the word of God, which is this book and the things the priest says is what the actual word of God is, not our inner workings and the still small voice and the guardian angels and the tables of our heart. But, you know, so like the purpose of life, according to the Yan Sui faith, is we, re we believe in progressive reincarnation. So we've been reincarnating many, many lives, many, many lives, and we're trying, it's because we're trying to learn something and, and each soul is trying to learn a different thing. We're like one prism that has many different fragmented colors, you know? We're each a unique color, but we're still one. We're all connected. We're all kind of the same prism, the same person, but we're different aspects and perspectives and personalities of that same person. 
uh, you know, fragmented it even more into just many lives trying to learn the, the thing we're trying to learn. So that's why there can't be one scripture and one religion because we're not, not all here to learn the same things, you know. So you write these things on the table of your heart. It's, it's an inner working, you know. So, and, and then there's a, a, an important chapter, chapter 5 in the Dragonfly Sutra, which goes over everything Jesus says, you know, mostly uh, Matthew chapter 24, about the last days, that everybody's going to be trying to convert you to their religion and saying, this is what's true, this book's true, this priest is true, and the, the real God's in the synagogue. Everybody will, will be trying, and they are, aren't they, to convince you they know the, the truth with a capital T. But Jesus says, uh, you know, to stand in the holy place, which is, you know, north, east, south, and west, Y-H-W-H, Yahweh, your body's the burning bush. And it burns in your nervous system for your whole life, and it's an in the church is an inward working within yourself. So you can learn from the wisdom of the elders and write their wisdom on the tables of your heart, and you can and it helps you learn things faster and make more use of your life. If you have to start over every life, it takes too long. So we write these these sacred works on the tables of our heart to save us time because we're trying to learn something, but really it's an inward personal journey. You know, and so we celebrate the holidays to remind us, you know, to, to keep certain things in focus so we don't just uh, end up kind of like a piece of wood drifting to and fro in the, in the um, ocean, you know, so that there's some kind of, of focus and direction, you know, because things are inspired. It's all inspired, you know. God could be someone on the bus like Joan Osborne sings, you know. You don't, we don't know everything. Nobody knows everything, you know? So it's all just a learning thing. So the Bible, um, it's not because we don't think, we don't, you know, we're, we, we're very aware. One of the required books is about this, is a Bible historian talking about how the, the Bible was written. And we study the works of Karen Armstrong, who's this, also a scholar. And, and so we, we're very aware of the scholarly information and facts and historical facts and archaeology and the things of what really happened with the scriptures and what they are in that. So, so really it just ends up as you're rewriting it on the tables of your heart, you keep everything into, into focus, you know, like they, they said, Jaws the same today, yesterday, and forever. The scriptures are the word of God, you know, and everybody's trying to figure out how you know, no wonder they don't read the Old Testament. You know, if you've ever read the Old Testament, how on earth, you know, can that be the, the same God that would be believable today? You know, so much has happened that was so very long ago, over 3,000 years ago. We've learned too much. A lot of that stuff's out of date. You don't need to go around killing people because of blah, 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 how they plant their crops and things like that, you know? So everything's taken with a grain of salt. Those things were based on a... On a culture and a time that was different uh, and, and the, the information itself was manipulated from people that were trying to control the people even maybe even with good intentions they would have they weren't 100 percent evil but it was for political for the king for the priests and for political and and power reasons so we take all that into consideration you know we learn in the end it's kind of weird but in the end we actually take the Bible, the Bible actually kind of means more to us than them. They cherry pick and everything. Meanwhile, we're reading the whole thing, you know? So it's kind of funny that because we modernize it and personalize it, that we might be accused of not believing in the actual Bible when we're the ones that's actually reading the whole thing and considering the whole thing, and they're, they're not. They're letting other people think for them, and they're cherry picking, and they're not even really reading it. So um, we study... The, the Elijah's, the Rasta Elijah's uh, teachings, which is Herbert W. Armstrong. So he's he represents like an older time, you know, back when we needed the scriptures. We used to not know how to read or write. So we, back when we believed the scriptures were the word of God, we needed them in a different way than we do now. So Herbert Armstrong is the Elijah because he prepares the way for Selassie by teaching you what the 
what the Bible actually says. You know, Herbert Armstrong is kind of like a, he's an author, you know, as he, he was part of a church and a leader of a church, but when he said that Jesus would, would um, you know, something significant would happen in 1975, when nothing happened, you know, then he lost his followers and everything, everything fell apart. But Rosters are like, oh, hello, 1975 is when Selassie, you know, disappeared from history and ascended to heaven. That was no random year. Plus, Herbert Armstrong pointed to Ethiopia as the king of the south and and uh, just all his teachings. Um, so that's, uh, that you can, the scripture talks about that and how important Herbert Armstrong's teachings are to Bob Marley. Bob Marley's the, is the main prophet. So we have the Elijah, which is like the highest ranking prophet, Herbert Armstrong. Then we have Bob Marley, which is kind of like the other prophet and then yourself, you know? Um, so, and the Dragonfly Sutra is meant to just be a launch pad for anybody else, you know? And then they might even write their own sutra. You know, or they might just use the sutra and save themselves time and just rewrite it on the tables of their heart differently, but not actually write a book, you know. And, and it's, uh, you know, hopefully I've saved time so your families can be organized. I'm a legal minister, so I have the legal ability to marry people and baptize people and, you know, and, and lead the, the Yan Sway faith, as well as I wrote the you know, spent so many years studying Rasta and everything, and it was not easy. It's easier nowadays, but it was impossible back in the day, you know. I was really cutting new ground and everything, a trailblazer and all that. So, so you can, but it's not, nothing's required. I'm just a, a person, you know. I, mean, I didn't do anything that you couldn't do or anyone else. But um, there is power in unifying where one or two are gathered in my name, Jesus said, there am I, you know. So if, uh, if it causes people to unify, right now I'm the only member, you know, I'm the founder, only member and the minister of the Yon Sway faith, you know. Um, if it causes, if there's pe people want to, to, to build a church in that and, and, and we can get more ministers, it, like there's, in, in a way, there's no limit to, I mean, it's a much, much better religion if you're into reality and, you know, maybe you're an atheist, but you believe in God, but just everything's such bullshit that you just say you're an atheist or something, you know, it's like, but yet you're a, pretty much a Buddhist. Well, one of the chapters in the Dragonfly Sutra is about, the seven le levels of ego maturity. And it explains that all of these things, the books and really the holidays, everything I've said, the most important part of Yon, the Yan Sway faith is the chapter that's about how to transcend the seven late, uh, stages of ego maturity so that you can transcend your ego. And the seventh stage is, is nirvana. You know, it's where you've become one with the, you become ecocentric. You've become one with the earth. And then through implications, you're one with the universe and everything. So like, and, and the, the sixth one is to be human, human centric, you know? So, and most people to be a millionaire and, and, and world famous and respected by humans, you only need to make it to like stage four or five at best, you know? Few make it to six, which is to be human centric. If you're a racist or a bigot in any way, you can't, you're not human centric because you don't see all humanity as one, as one, you know? <clears throat> But the problem with seeing all humanity as one is humanity is not the bigger picture. So the seventh level is to become ecocentric, where you also believe that not only are all the humans one, but we're also one with the rock and the bird and the trees and the ocean, and that we're all one, you know, and then, it, then we're one with the universe, you know, that it's, we're all one, you know, and we're in that. So transcending ego is, is the only way you're going to, purify the bullshit so that you can learn whatever it is you're supposed to learn in this uh, reincarnation, you know? So so part of Yan Sway is just to give like a, to give something that people can unify about, holidays and and, and the name Yan Sway. There's a bunch of symbols, like the symbol for the Yan Sway is the heart, because Yan Sway means jaw, and in sway is, uh, is the English word in su. So in, to ensue means to follow. And jaw is in your heart, Yahweh, 
YHWH, fire, water, air, and earth. It's the powers within. So ya, ya, ya and sway means to follow your heart because that's where ja is. So the symbol of the ya and sway is the heart, you know? And uh, the dragonfly is the symbol of the, of the dragonfly sutra, you know? So the dragonfly and the heart are, are, are sacred. So is the butterfly. So there's a, a chapter I have recorded in my in the in my music, the Seashores uh, playlist. Uh, my music is called the Seashores. There, there I have the 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 Yan Sway sacred hymn. So we have a hymn where it goes over all the basic concepts to have the beatitudes in your heart, the beatitudes of Jesus, and to you know, and the symbol of the butterfly, the the symbol of the dragonfly, the symbol of the heart, you know, that we're all one. And it uses the snowflake, you know, no two snowflakes are alike. It says, I know that nowadays snowflake, it's like, oh, they're a snowflake and they've associated with bad things, but uh, we don't do that. We're optimistic and not pessimistic. We, we find the beauty in things because in the end, it's all bullshit anyway, you know? So thinking that you own the truth with a capital T, is a sign of someone that's egocentric. They're holding on to something. They're holding on to some ego of some type to believe something like that. We believe in being egoless and being one with everything and seeing the beauty in everything and not believing in, you know, like scripture and priesthood and these things are out of date concepts, you know? Uh, so so that's, uh, that's pretty much what the Yan Sway is. So um, you can check out the audio book and there's a link at the beginning of this playlist for the Dragonfly Sutra. You can look at the, the, there's a playlist that's called How to Meditate, Who Am I? And that one goes over the seven levels, levels of ego development, but it's also one of the chapters of the Dragonfly Sutra. So all you really, really need is the Dragonfly Sutra. But it, it goes over all of that. It goes over the other five books of Moses. There weren't five books of of Moses, there were 10. They took out half of the books. The Catholic Church took out half of the books of Moses. They took out all the ones that make him sound like a magician. Moses was a witch. And the church, the religion came from Egypt, you know? The Egyptians were the bad guys, but he still was an Egyptian magician and a witch. And so it's just, uh, you know, half, like Bob says, half the story has never been told, you know? So... Bob Marley is everything to us. We, we study his lyrics. Anything that has anything to do with Bob Marley means the everything to us. You know, we're Bob Marley junkies. Um, we also take the clash very seriously. We, you know, instead of growing dreadlocks, you might have a mohawk, you know. We, we have uh, punk rock roots, you know, and there's, there's playlists on the clash and punk rock history and, and references to it in the Dragonfly Sutra. Punk rockers were were yaw and sway. You know everything I just said is the the origins of punk rock. The original punk rockers got their ideas from the Rastas in in England. You know, and so uh, so it's it's the same thing. We're we're continuing the work of uh, Joe Strummer and Bob Marley, and and it's it really always been the same thing. You know, so that's what the yaw and sway is.